here to present you Unicorn Spit and how to take average laminate countertops and turn them into what looks like polished stone. We have all of our colors here placed into dollar store spray bottles diluted three parts water to one part unicorn spit. In order to prepare your surface, you take a seven mil drop cloth, your surfaces around your countertop, nice and masked off. You don't want the unicorn spit to spray all over the place. Then you're gonna to wanna to clean your surface with, then you're gonna to wanna to do a 220 sanding on your surface, just to kinda of make sure you get anything extravagant off. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your surface is pretty level. See, there's variances. If you pull it tight, it'll give you a mist. If you open it up strong, it'll give you a streak. So, we're gonna start this project with a little mist down onto our countertops. You're going to want to spray in a direction. Now, natural stone grows in a pattern. Kind of smears like this, because it's made out of minerals and things that flow together. Make sure that you maintain keeping an organic flow by always spraying in an angled position, allowing the unicorn spit to land like it's flowing and shooting out. The next color we're going to go with is a color that is a custom mix. It's called Patina. It's one part dragon's belly with three parts Zia Teal. I'm not ready for big bolts yet. Just medium ones. And I'm shooting on an angle. When it comes to this little side here where it's hard to get, you're just gonna wanna put your hand up against it or tape it off and just shoot right over it. Just like that. I love amethyst. I'm going to put this all the way out. So far, far away. Cause what that's gonna do is Give me these beautiful, beautiful bolts. And I'm just gonna let them fall where they may. Far away, close up, you name it. To also take some time to research, go on Google Images, and just see some different patterns you like of different granites. And you're not limited to granites either. You might as well look at pretty jewelry like lavenderites and, you know, Tiger Eye, there's beautiful jewels out there and we can put them on our cables. We're not limited to granite anymore. I'm gonna make one large line coming down, just like you would imagine it to grow on its own. From there, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of our blue thunder and I'm going to give it kind of a mist and spray in one, because it's gonna give another pattern. So let's get it going here. Make sure you shake them up intermittently. Now, all right, now we're gonna come in. I know it looks pretty crazy, right? Trust me, it's about to get really cool. We're gonna come in with our Navajo Jewel. It's also diluted three parts water to one part unicorn spit. A little bit of unicorn spit goes a very long way. I'm gonna put this at a mist because I don't want, I want this purple and the blue to be my bolts. Get it shook up. Here we go, let me get our mist going. Again, I'm gonna get to that side and those corners. I'm gonna generously go over with the Navajo Jewel. Coming along, spraying at that angle in order to maintain an organic um, flow to it. We're gonna go over it with a little bit of our Zia Teal. Zia Teal is a light turquoise color. And this is gonna start giving us some dimension. Now, as you can see, I got this on a fine mist. This is just starting to build up some color layers. I'm just gonna tone it down a little bit. Let's get some more amethyst in here. I'm gonna put this on the farthest way out. I want some big bolts. I love our blue thunder. And I'm gonna mist it now rather than shoot it. I'm gonna put just a tad bit 
more blue in here. To top her all off, we're gonna put a fine mist of the black right back over it. Now this is our midnight blackness. And here's where you start getting the real stone look. I like to add the black because it looks like little specks of like another mineral coming through. We're gonna be adding a little bit more. So it looks like a vein running. See how it gets a vein running there? Magic time. Get your bottle of water. You're going to mist right above. All right, you're not going to allow it to really change the direction. You wanna look, zoom in right here. This is my favorite spot. Look at that, you guys. And then as you add the water, if you notice, it really starts marbling together. But we're gonna need that water for another reason besides blending them. Right now, it looks pretty cool. If you're satisfied with what it looks like now, let it dry. And remember, unicorn spit is only permanent once it's sealed. So if you don't like the way it looks right now when it's wet, wash it off, because that's what it's gonna look like once you clear coat it. So it's forgiving. You can do it over and over again until you like what you got. Ta-da! Now a lot of people like to use a straw and blow. Unfortunately, I just can't sit there and blow a big piece of furniture like this. It'd be crazy. So Dawn set this up. It's a blow dryer. I put it on the cool setting. He taped a water bottle over the top by cutting off the bottom so that it has a direct area to flow. It's gonna get noisy here for a second, but I'm gonna have you see what it does. Are you ready? Right. Let's start making real magic. We're getting the flow going by just aiming it in one direction. This is going to really move it, really give it an organic shape going. Oh, it looks like a black oval almost. It's really beautiful. Isn't that cool? I love it, I love it, I love it. Happen to make a mistake? Like say you took your finger and ruined the whole thing, right? Don't worry, just mist it with a little water. It'll be pretty. So it's forgiving. You don't have any problems. You're not gonna have any errors. It's art. There's no mistakes in art, just happy little accident. You see that Zia, it's stuck down at the bottom, but the latest ones that I did were, were really moving quick. So it's gonna give you a three-dimensional look. It's really cool. So my countertops with, I find it to be durable. It's waterproof and heat resistant up to 175 degrees. It's gamma wood glaze coat. It has 70 coats of varnish and just one application. The trick to it is, is to make sure you follow the directions perfectly. We used a whole gallon of it for this project. It's always better to make more than enough than not enough in order to avoid bubbles, dimples, and stuff. We're ready to pour it quick once it gets into this because it will harden up on you very fast. So, I get stir it six minutes one time, you gotta stir it six minutes the second time, and then you're ready to go. It's an adhesive spreader, or if you're in a pinch, you can just make some little chops. Reduce, reuse, reuse. Yeah. The important thing, yesterday, I taped this off to do my spit. So it's gonna be fine, and here we go. All right, you're gonna start on the side. Again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your area is level. Shim the base if you need to. It's off just a little bit, it's not gonna hurt nobody. Let me get that poured out here. What is happening is that when Unicorn Spit dries, it dries to this chalky finish. 
But when you add your oil-based clear coat, such as Pamela Wood Glaze Coat, it gives it this bright, colorful style that it was before you ever, when it was wet, so it'll look the same. So one of the coolest things about Unicorn Spit is that it tells you when it's dry by turning into this chalky finish. So what I'm gonna do is take it right down the middle. One of the important things about Glaze Coat and any epoxy really, is that you do not want to go over an area more than three times. If you do, you're gonna cause yourself bubbles, you're gonna cause yourself dimples. It's just overworking the product. And you're going to lose the, the ability to do this in one shot, because then you'd have to lightly sand and recoat. Now you're just gonna allow it to go over the edges, you guys. You want it to drip over your edges, and that's why I've already painted my edges black with Midnight Blackness Unicorn Spit. On this instance, I used it full strength, so it'd be more paint white. I'm doing it kind of on an angle. Now that is kind of like, you ever frost a cake? That's what we're going for. As you can see, I'm bringing it all the way to the edge, and I know that you guys are like, oh my gosh, her edges are so ugly. Well, it's because, see, it comes all the way out to the edge like this, but Unicorn Spit is a water-based stain, so as long as it's not sealed, you can just easily wipe it off and clean it, pulling from the thickest area, bringing it all the way to that edge, and I will later, after it's dry, clean it off the little backsplash. As you can see, there's these drips. What you're gonna do, it's very simple. Take your glove, with your hand and you're just gonna buff them in. You're gonna get those drips and smear them right over. All right, that'll get them that corner nice and shiny. Bright. I like to set my heat gum at 980 degrees. Use a butane torch. You can use one of those little tiny torches that you use for creme brulee. Those work well. Too. Now you also want to make sure that you don't overheat an area. You don't want to boil it. Because that boiling it will make it actually get more bubbles. Take my rubber glove and I'm going to go over this edging to catch any drips. In about an hour and a half from now, you're going to want to come out and look at it because you're going to want to look at it anyways. And just rub your hand around it once a couple of times just to catch any drips. Also make sure that not only are you worrying about the side, but you worry about the under area as well. If you do get drips on the under area, it's very easy the next day after it's dry. You're just going to take your sander and you're going to um, just go zoom, 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 and they come right off. You can also use an exacto blade. We have already done the upper shelf here. Whenever you water it, you get these, like we use like four parts water to one part unicorn spit. And that gave us these little lightning bolts coming through. And I thought they were really neat. I love them. And it shows off the color of laminate underneath. If it was black laminate, those would be black lightning bolts. 